Welcome to TNT Sports Talk. Today is Tuesday, January 29th. As always, we're presented by D's Home Cuts. I'm your host, Travis Karcheski. Uh, we got a great show for you today. No interviews today. We're going to do a little bit of a break. We've been on sort of a, a hot streak, I guess you could say, the last couple of days. Three straight shows, so three straight interviews um, with pro athletes. Uh, so that was cool. You know, I'm really glad we got to do that. But we are... Um, we do have more interviews coming up in the future, but today is just kind of a break show. We don't want to do them all back to back to back to back. Uh, we, we are taking kind of a break um, in between interviews. But again, we do have a lot to talk about today, so that also plays into that. Uh, but we have a huge show for you today. Like I said, it was kind of a crazy weekend, uh, especially for me. Me and Truman ran our first 5K. Uh, we live in Ohio, so we ran a Chippewa Lake 5K. Uh, Truman and me are different ages, so we ran in different age groups, and we both came in first place in our age group, so we were pretty excited about that. Although Truman smoked me, I got to give him credit. Uh, he beat me by at least two minutes. He was ahead of me the whole time. Uh, but I, I also, I didn't have music. I should have worn music. That was my biggest mistake. Uh, I should have worn some music and listened to that. Everybody else did except me ran it with a bunch of guys. Our dad ran it, um, and then obviously a bunch of friends ran it. Um, but it was really fun. Everybody finished. Everybody, you know, a lot of people got medals. Uh, and I was really happy with how well I did it. But also, during that, we did the... Uh, it was like a lake 5K, right? We ran it around a 5K. It's in the middle of January in Ohio. We also did like a polar bear jump where they cut out the ice. The lake is completely frozen over, but they cut out a pretty wide uh, square of ice. And then you get on a stage and you jump in freezing cold water. Um, so me and uh, four other people do that. did that, including Truman. Uh, not everybody who ran the 5k did it because they weren't crazy like we were, um, but it was freezing. It was one of the coldest things I've ever done. Uh, you know, I've attended January, uh, December football games in Green Bay. I've played football in Northeast Ohio during November and December. Um, and that was easily the coldest thing I've ever done. Just jumping into pretty much ice water, uh, it just shocks your body. You just get jolted up. Um, and then you run into a tent, and it's just like a big, you know, locker room. It's supposed to be a heated tent. It's it's, it's heated, but not well. Um, and the bottom floor is just water because all these guys are in there just stripping off all their soaking wet clothes. Everybody wants to get their stuff off as quickly as possible. And it's basically just like a locker room at the rec center. You know, old guys are just naked, walking around everywhere. It's disgusting. Everybody's just trying, trying to keep their eyes up. Um, while you're trying to change and then you know the bottom of the floor is all wet so it's freezing cold water you're stepping into um, so I ended up I had a duffel bag and I was stepping in the duffel bag um, stepping on all my clean and dry clothes with my wet cold feet um, but it was freezing it was really bad uh, you had to wear shoes while you're doing it because um, of the ice and stuff uh, at the bottom of the lake so I just I just threw out those shoes because they were freezing uh, they were cold they were wet and, you know, I knew I wasn't going to save them. So I just threw those out. But it was it was an experience. I'll give it that. Um, you know, Dom kind of invited us along with us. Like I said, if you've, if you've watched his YouTube channel, Unlimited Dom, uh, he, he uh, like I said, he lost a bunch of weight. He lost He's lost about 90 pounds in the last couple of months, which is insane. Uh, and his goal is to run a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, and a full marathon by the end of the year. Uh, so he's doing all this. You can watch the video. Again, it's Unlimited Dom is the YouTube page. Uh, you can see us run the 5K. He's also got some great diet tips and stuff on there. Uh, but you can see uh, what we were kind of experiencing. Uh, but he again, he invited us along for this. It was really fun an experience. I've been meaning to run a 5K for a while. When I was, after football ended, I lost a bunch of weight and I started to run. Uh and I knew I really wanted to do, to do a 5K, but I never really pushed myself to do it. And I'm glad Dom kind of set this up and scheduled it because I have been really meaning to do one for a long time. Uh, and I'm really happy with how well I did, you know. Uh, everybody did really well. So I ran in about 22 minutes, which is something I – not even 22 minutes, like 17 minutes, which is crazy because uh, I never thought I'd run it that fast. But that is that. That was really cool. Uh, then I spent Sunday – I watched about – a half hour of the Pro Bowl. It's one of those things where you turn it on and you know you don't really know why you're watching it. It's just you're watching like a practice, like a half speed walk through practice. Uh, so I kind of turned that off. 
Uh, I'd rather watch, if you're going to watch, between the Super Bowl, between the championships and the Super Bowl, you can get that one week, that one weekend lull of just nothing on, you know, the Pro Bowl's the only thing on, and that's not even fun anymore. Um, that's where you want to watch the Senior Bowl. The Senior Bowl is, I think, one of the most entertaining, uh, most underrated and entertaining football games you could watch around this time of year. It's way better than the Pro Bowl. you got a bunch of kids working their butts off to try to impress the scouts. Uh, the quarterbacks this year were amazing. Uh, you know, just going down the list, you know, Gardner Minshew, Drew Locke, Trace McSorley, uh, Will Greer. Um, I know I'm missing some guys. Oh, Finley, Daniel Jones. You know, there's just a lot of good quarterbacks in this class in the Senior Bowl game, and it was fun to watch. I didn't get to watch all of it because, again, that was on Saturday to pretty much – Directly after the race, I got to watch about half of it. Um, that's a lot better than the Pro Bowl, and it kind of, you know, it feeds. It's it's a real it's a real game, and you know, you get to see the NFL coaching staff. So it feeds that NFL addiction that you're kind of going through withdrawals. Um, so it kind of helps a little bit, not a lot. But then the Pro Bowl is supposed to help you a lot, but it doesn't. Um, we'll talk about the Pro Bowl a little bit later in the show. Uh, my thoughts on that when we get to football. Uh, but it sucks because well, we'll we'll talk about that. Let's get into the biggest storyline that came out on Monday. Actually, Anthony Davis, uh, the Pelican star, um, superstar player, has requested a trade through his agent, Rich Paul. Um, you know, we kind of expected this. I think the rumors that Anthony Davis was going to be traded have been sort of heating up over the last couple of days, last couple of months. Um, Ever since Boogie Cousins left, I think people have kind of realized that the Pelicans aren't going anywhere anytime soon, uh, and Anthony Davis has realized that as well. So he requested a trade. Uh, I think right now the Lakers are pretty much the favorites for this. Uh, you know, I saw a tweet. You know that it starts with Lonzo, Kuzma, Zubac, uh, and a couple picks. That's where they're going to start. Those three young. Very good players, but I've also heard, you know, Brandon Ingram, uh, Cadavius Caldwell-Pope is also being thrown around there, Lance Stevenson has been held around uh, there, and also multiple picks. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be a blockbuster trade. Uh, If they do trade with the Lakers, the Pelicans will basically just be getting the Lakers of the old day, uh, of a year ago. You know, they'll have possibly Lonzo, Kuzma, or Ingram, um, and then you add Julius Randle onto that. It's just basically swapping jerseys. jerseys. But uh, Anthony Davis with LeBron James would be a lot of fun to watch uh, as an NBA fan. Um, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, maybe the Celtics should go out and get him, but the Celtics actually can't because uh, of Kyrie's contract. Kyrie has this sort of contract. Um, it's called the Rose Rule contract. It's like a clause. Uh, and if a player makes up a certain amount of salary of your team cap, a certain percentage amount, um, he can't uh, be traded. Um, for another player, you can't bring on another player who has that contract as well. And Anthony Davis has the Rose Rule contract as well. So the Celtics can't um, bring in Anthony Davis unless they include Kyrie Irving in the deal, which... Obviously, they wouldn't trade Kyrie Irving uh, for Anthony Davis because you kind of want to pair Anthony Davis with Kyrie Irving. Um, so that probably won't happen. That's, that can't happen uh, unless they trade him after July 1st because um, I know Anthony Davis has still got another year left, I believe, on his contract, uh, or you know, or they wait till free agency. It's it's just a, just a lot of different things going on. At the end of the day, I think if he does get traded, I think he'll end up a Laker. I know the Knicks have said they're going to be aggressive, but... Who wants to go to the Knicks if you're a star player like Anthony Davis? Um, we've seen this time and time again in this league, and you're going to see it a lot more. These players, uh, these star players are kind of held hostage by these uh, cancerous franchises, the cancerous owners. Um, you know, you've seen it a lot the past couple of years. You know, Kyrie wants out. Uh you know, guys just want to get traded. They don't want to be playing for these organizations, and I understand it. Uh, us as NBA fans have been uh, mistreated for a long time with Anthony Davis. We haven't gotten our full fill of Anthony Davis because he's been playing in New Orleans, which no disrespect to New Orleans or the Pelicans franchise, but it's just not a big market. We want to see these guys in L.A., Miami. New York is still a big deal. Boston, these type of places. Um, and you look... Uh, New York's a little bit different, 
because that franchise is a mess up there. The Knicks is a mess. Uh, so guys really don't want to play there. But you look at guys like Porzingis, Devin Booker, um, Kemba Walker, Gordon Hayward last year. These guys have been or are being held hostage um, in crappy franchises. And it's just, you know, just release them. Let them go. Let us NBA fans enjoy them properly uh, in big market cities. You know, you look, Porzingis, I think he's going to be traded here soon. Obviously, he's injured right now, so we aren't getting our full fill of him. Um, he's a guy who, pair him with another superstar, could completely take off and run this league. Um, then, same with Devin Booker. Playing for the Phoenix Suns? Who the hell wants to watch a Phoenix, a Phoenix Sun game? You know, Devin Booker is the only reason you want to watch the Suns play. Um, and he signed that big extension with them, obviously, to get his money. But I could see him, before the end of that extension, being traded, being moved uh, for some pieces. Because these are franchises that are stuck in limbo. Um, you look at Kemba Walker with the uh, Hornets. These franchises are stuck in just a spot right now that just they just can't seem to break out of. And... Uh, guys like Gordon Hayward did it. They were stuck with the Jazz. Uh, he was a star. Obviously a little bit different with the injuries, so he made the decision to move on to Boston where he can be uh, more publicized a little bit more than Utah. Uh, but guys like Kemba Walker, I think Kemba is an MVP caliber type of player, but you just don't see that because he plays in Charlotte, which, again, no disrespect to Charlotte or the Hornets organization, but it's just not a place that superstars can thrive. Uh, and I think New Orleans is like that. So you're going to see Anthony Davis get traded, and I think you're going to see a lot more of him, and you're going to see a lot more fans, you know, kind of being shocked. Not diehard NBA fans, guys who actually play, pay close attention to the game. They won't be shocked. But basic, you know, level NBA fans who don't really dive into the stats and stuff of each every of each individual game, you're going to see them. Um, kind of be shocked at how well Anthony Davis plays because they just don't know how good of a player this guy is. He's a top three talent in the NBA. He's a top ten player, easily. Um, he should be winning MVPs, but I think his MVP uh, case is not being heard as loudly as it should because he plays in a city like, like New Orleans, which is more of a football town, if anything. So, all respect to him, you know, I'm... I, I like when players, you know, take their career into their own hands. Uh, you know, Pelicans fans aren't going to like this, but thankfully there aren't that many Pelicans fans, so it won't cause that big of a stink in the press. But Anthony Davis is going to be traded, I believe, here soon. Whether they wait to the deadline or not, I think they can get a pretty good haul in place of him getting those younger guys, you know, especially if you go to the Lakers, which is just a lot of young talent who needs to flourish. But we'll see what happens with that. Staying in basketball, we got a lot of basketball topics today. We'll go back to our guy Carmelo Anthony, check in on what he's doing. Uh, he returned to New York the other day for you know Dwayne Wade's last game in Madison Square Garden. Um, he got a standing ovation. They played his 62 point highlight game um, on the big screen. Uh, you know they gave him, like I said, standing ovation. He said you know this will always be home. This is always home for me. Uh, he's a legend. I think. Everybody who's ever said, you know, he was an overrated uh, guy, he wasn't loved by the fans, I think that just put that moment right there, put that all to bed, put it all to rest. He's a Knicks legend. He is, if not the best, he is top three, top two um, Knicks players in history. Uh, he really took that city by storm. He took a franchise that right now you see how bad it is. He took that franchise and he lifted it out of despair. In a very short amount of time with not a lot of talent around him, he made them playoff contenders. He made them championship contenders. And, you know, sadly, he didn't get the help he needed at the end of the day. You know, you see guys like LeBron who need two to three All-Stars to help them win a championship. Or, you know, the Warriors need five. Uh, so, I think that moment right there sort of brought closure to Carmelo Anthony. I don't believe he'll ever play another game as a Nick. Maybe at the end of the day he'll sign like a 10-day contract or a one-day contract to retire a Nick. Um, it made me tear up, though. It just showed us, showed me that to put a bunch of fans in a room that love Carmelo Anthony and just cheer him on like that, uh, it really helped to change, I think, more of the narrative 
in the media. You know, I, I, I see a lot on Twitter. I follow a lot of Carmelo Anthony fans on Twitter. We're always trying to change the narrative of Carmelo Anthony from being this bad, cancerous player to really a great teammate and a great player for not only the organization but the fans. Uh, and I think, you know, Saturday night, I believe it was, whenever, it showed us that, you know, he was. He got this huge cheer. Everybody loved him. It a little bit reminded me of uh, Brett Favre's homecoming to Green Bay when he was retired into the Ring of Honor. You know, I was at that game. I was. Uh, it wasn't a game, but I was. I was at that ceremony. Uh, you know, I was in the stands cheering, giving him the standing ovation. And it was a little bit like that. Uh, you know, you see a huge contrast from Durant to Carmelo Anthony when Durant returned to when Melo returned, um, and you really see who. The fans really loved, um, and obviously it has a huge impact about how they left the team or whatever. If they were traded, if they requested a trade, if they left in free agency, it's a huge difference. But still, it just reminded me a lot of Brett Favre, and uh, when he came back to Green Bay uh, to be retired into the Ring of Honor. Uh, but Melo will always have a home in New York City, and I think that's a big thing for NBA players and athletes all around the world, to finally have that one place you can call home. You can play for a million different cities, but to have that one place where you can truly look back and say, I love playing there, that will always be home, that's huge. And hopefully, um, I think you will, Carmelo Anthony will get another shot in the NBA uh, later this season, and hopefully he can put all those haters to rest finally. But we are going on, today is day 82. I repeat, today is 82 since Carmelo Anthony last played in an NBA game. So that still sucks, but what are you going to do? That was definitely cool to see on Saturday. Probably the best thing you could see when Carmelo Anthony is still not playing as a Carmelo fan is just to see him get that standing ovation. But let's go back to, like I I touched on a little bit earlier, Kevin Durant. He is also going back to Oklahoma City uh, March 20th. Uh, He will be going to Oklahoma City on his off day to go and make a special trip for Nick Collison. Uh, Nick Collison, like I said, is getting his jersey retired, will be the first jersey retired uh, in the Oklahoma City Thunder franchise. Uh, You know, Durant has really credited Collison with helping his career. Um, Nick played, I believe, 15 years all with the Thunder slash Supersonics franchise. Uh... He's always been, I was not Thunder fan last year um, when Melo was there, and he's always just been this good guy that fans love. He's kind of just been a fan favorite. Yeah, he hasn't put up the numbers, he hasn't gotten the all-star appearances, the MVP stuff, but uh, he has been kind of the good guy that everybody loves. Kind of like Della Vadova for Cavs fans, Nick Collison has been that uh, tenfold. Um I think he's going to be booed. I think when they show Durant, I think he'll be booed. I don't think Oklahoma City fans are over that yet. But obviously this isn't about him. This is about Nick Collison. He's just there supporting him. Um, So I don't expect Durant to get a lot of screen time. Um, I don't think they mean for this night to be about boos in the past like that. I just think they mean it to be about Nick Collison. I think the fans will understand that. I do think he'll get booed, though, if he is shown on the screen. But we will see. It's a couple days away. Um... You know, March 20th, it's two months away, actually, not a couple days. But uh, that's it for basketball. We had a long basketball section today, uh, which is good because I want to get back to talking more about basketball now with football ending. Um, but we're going to move now to baseball. we got a couple baseball topics as well. Um, we'll talk about that. But before that, I had to remind you guys about my guy, Andrew, at A's Lawn Service. Since 2014, A's Lawn Service has been providing professional landscaping to many homes around Northeast Ohio at a low and fair price. Don't get tired of being dragged around by by these bigger landscaping companies that just hire a million guys they don't even know uh, because the turnover rate is just so high. Trust Ace. He's got a great group of guys who've been there for a long time. They love working for him. They love doing great work. And Andrew really takes pride in his work. Um, I've seen a lot of it um, on his Twitter, Ace Lawn Service, at Ace Lawn Service. Uh, So check it out. He really puts pride into his work, something you just don't get with those bigger landscaping companies. So turn to A's, and trust me, you won't be disappointed. Uh, A's Lawn Service, the phone number is 330-241-2392. Again, the phone number is 330-241-2392, and the email is lawnservice.a's at gmail.com. A's Lawn Service, LLC, you grow it, we cut it. So i got three baseball topics I wanted to touch on. We'll start with Whit Merrifield, uh, the Kansas City superstar. 
Uh, like I said, he plays for the Royals. He signed a four-year, $16.25 million extension with the Royals the other day. Um, probably the most underrated player in baseball today. I was going to say overlooked, but there's so many overlooked superstars um, in the MLB today. Uh, he's just another example of a bad MLB marketing, how bad they do uh, at marketing players. Um, and I think, honestly, I'm going to shoot at the Royals a little bit. The Royals also do a bad job at marketing him. Um, they're a couple years removed from their World Series team. Uh, and they really don't have that many superstars left. Whit Merrifield is the guy you're going to want to sell to fans that come to the ballpark. Whit Merrifield is the guy you're going to want to sell to get those primetime games. He is one of the most underrated players in the game today, but there's just so many overlooked guys that you can't call him overlooked. Um, because, hell, Mike Trout is overlooked as a superstar in today's game. Um, but Whit Merrifield, he finished 17th in the MVP voting last year. Uh, he hit 304 with 12 home runs. Uh, he had 194 hits, the most in the league, and 30 stolen bases, the most in the league. So if you look at this contract, four years, $16 million, that is a great cost for somebody who provides so much in terms of production for you. Um, but, again, if you go down the street and you ask, 40 basic MLB fans, they're not going to know who Whit Merrifield is. Uh, now you go down the street and you ask me and Brian, Brian Leonard, uh, Truman, who Whit Merrifield is. Me, Truman, and Brian are going to know because we love baseball. But he is so much fun to watch. And the only reason I like watching Royals-Indians games is because of Whit Merrifield and Salvador Perez. But um, he's somebody you can build a franchise around. And now the Royals got him locked up for a couple years now. Uh and I do believe he'll keep producing. And I think at the end of the day, next couple of seasons, we'll see that 17th in MVP voting be risen, maybe even to a top three, maybe even if he does more. And maybe if he was in a bigger market, I think he'd easily be um, considering for AL MVP. Or, you know, if he moves to a bigger market, um, I think we could see that more. But again, the Royals, this is a player to build around. Smart move for the Royals to keep him for the next couple of years. Uh, so let's stay in that division, um, best division in baseball right now. Let's let's talk to the best team in that division, the Cleveland Indians. So many of you, many of you know, I'm a diehard Cleveland Indians fan. I watch, I try to watch at least a little bit of every single game, um, and, and I just I want to rant a little bit um, about our fans. Um, I've seen a lot of heat in the media the last couple of days on Twitter about the Indians, you know, not signing guys for their bullpen, for their lineup. This lineup's not that good. Uh, it's not as good as it was last year. This bullpen going into the season is not as good as it was last year. Um, and I want to address that a little bit. So let, let's, let's talk about where the Indians are at right now. So over the offseason, they haven't done much um, in terms of basic fans. They think, oh, the Indians haven't signed a superstar. They haven't gone after Machado or Bryce Harper. This outfield's a mess. Uh, what are we going to do at first base? We just brought in a crappier first baseman um, in Carlos Santana. The bullpen, we got rid of Cody Allen and Andrew Miller, but we didn't replace those guys. Let me talk for a minute. Let's start with the, let's start with the outfield situation. The outfield situation I'll admit is a little bit of a mess. We shouldn't have gotten rid of Brantley. I think Brantley should have stayed. I think we should have signed him. I think we're going to regret that. Um, but what we have in the outfield is a lot of young talent, a lot of young prospects that we've invested years into. You guys like Zimmer, Greg Allen, Naquin. Uh, I could just go down and up the list every single time. You know, guys like. Uh, uh, who am I missing here? Uh, Martin, uh, who we saw a little bit of last year, who was, who was amazing in the limited action we saw last year. So we're going to get a full season of these guys, you know, guys like Chisenhall, uh, Rajai Davis, uh, Michael Brantley, these older guys. They aren't going to take away these younger guys at bats. Um, and for a younger guy to really start to produce, they need as many at bats as they can, they can get. So that they're going to be fine there. I think that outfield's going to come together. I think we're going to see um, maybe a couple guys break out. So we'll see what happens there. Um, then you go to first base. I think our infield's solid. I think Ramirez and Lindor are solid. First base. Um, Carlos Santana's a better player than Edwin Encarnacion, and he's a lot cheaper. Um, 
Santana's a fan favorite. He doesn't strike out. He gets more walks than uh, Encarnacion. He has a better war than Encarnacion. And like at the end of the day, he's cheaper. He'll hit about the same amount of home runs that Encarnacion will hit uh, this time into his career. Um, Jake Bowers, one of the most hyped up prospects coming into this year coming into last year um yeah he didn't produce as well in his first year um but neither Lindor didn't produce that well in his first year until the end um Bowers is gonna get you know the start I believe at first base Santana will be the DH and we will see him get a ton of at-bats a ton of um playing time and I think we'll see him come into his own he's a fan he was a fan favorite in Tampa Bay they were pissed that, that they got rid of him um, and I think we got a good one here in Bowers for a very cheap price of uh, Yandy Diaz, who I wish we had Yandy Diaz still, I'll admit that, but um, I think we're going to really like what we got here in Bowers. The catcher position, um, uh, we're going to see Haas, I think, and Perez a lot. Um, I'm not really sure why we signed Pulowski uh, from the Mets, but he'll also get some at-bats. Uh, I, I believe it should just be Perez and uh, uh, hit. Sorry, I'm a little off right now. It's 5 in the morning. A little bit of Haas and Perez. I think Perez will get the start, and I think we'll see him come more into his own as well. Um, he doesn't get consistent at-bats. Giving guys consistent at-bats help a lot. But let's talk about the bullpen. A lot of people are hitting on the bullpen. We signed Oliver Perez back the other day, which is a good move for us. He played well for us. He pitched some good innings. I get it. We haven't done much work with the bullpen, but that's okay. This division is bad enough. And the starters are such are good enough that a trade at the deadline will help us out a lot. I think we'll, we'll see a little bit more. I don't think there was that many good names in the bullpen. We'll see a lot more uh, at the deadline. Uh, big names that we could go and trade for for cheap. Big uh, uh, bullpen names like Brad Hand. It's seen the last couple of years. The Indians are open to making trades at the deadline, especially in that bullpen. To go get guys like Brad Hand, uh, Simber, both, pe- both of those guys are going to be integral pieces in our bullpen this year um we got andrew miller a couple years ago but these starters clevenger bauer kluber and carrasco those four guys and bieber who's up and coming but those four guys are aces on every single other team we have the best starting rotation in the league we don't need that great of a bullpen yeah it helps and but we do have guys like brad hand oliver perez uh, Neil Ramirez. These guys have pitched good innings for us. Simber is young. He has shown flashes. Uh, you know, we do have a lot of good pieces, and we started to see these pieces a little bit more um, at the end of the last year. And at the end of the day, we still do have guys like Danny Salazar and Cody Anderson who are still coming back for injury. Uh, but Salazar was a freaking all star a couple years ago. Um, and Cody Anderson was great. In his limited action, but we'll see what happens now that they come back from injury. But those two, those both of those guys could play a big part of our bullpen, a big role in our bullpen. So don't hate on the Indians this quickly. This division is bad enough that we'll win it. I think we'll easily win this division again. Um, and then we can once we start to position ourselves more in that first place race. Uh, I think we can go get some moves at the deadline, go get some guys at the deadline. Um, this team kind of has a little bit more of a 2016 feel um, of the teams of the past. You know, there's not much hype around them. We're not expecting them to do much, um, but they could come out and surprise us. So we'll see what happens with the Indians. Uh, I just think fans need to slow down a little bit on them. Let's talk about the Brewers, too. Truman won't be here for this, uh, so he's going to be pissed when he listens to this later. Uh Flatline, the Brewers haven't done enough to get them to the World Series this offseason. They've lost more than they've gained. Uh, and the thing that they needed the most, starting pitching, they didn't do anything to grab uh, good starting pitchers at the deadline, at the deadline in free agency. Granted, there wasn't much available, but there was decent names out there to shore up that rotation. Um, I was looking at their roster. They have about 13 solid options to uh, make up that five-man rotation. But none of these guys are consistent, established starting pitchers in the league. Uh, Chachin, I believe his name is, uh, is their ace. He had one good year. He had one good year last year. Um, he hasn't had a good year 
at all in his whole career except that. Uh, they're going to get rid of Wade Miley. They're not going to sign him back. Uh, who He pitched a lot of good innings for them in the playoffs. Uh, so there's just a lot of inconsistent players. A lot of these guys are injured. Uh, you know, Chase Anderson, Jimmy Nelson, some big names who are just injured, hurt. You don't know how they're going to be when they come back from injuries. Um, so I know Truman's going to be pissed. But they just haven't done enough to... Uh, Get them over the hump to the World Series. I think starting pitching was the reason why they didn't make it to the World Series last year. Um, they got the lineup. Uh, also, also, they lost a little bit from that lineup. But they got the lineup still. Um, but they just don't have the pitching. And they aren't doing enough to uh, uh, get more starting pitching, if that makes sense. Again, a good deadline deal, though, is something that they can do. They have a couple of names in their uh, farm system that they could trade. But who knows? what they're going to do. They're just the Brewers being dumb as usual. Let's talk about football, though. Let's move on to football. That was baseball. Um, but before that, I had to remind you guys that our show is brought to you by D's Home Cuts. Again, you know my guy Dom. I just ran the 5K with him. Uh, he has running. He has been running Dom's Home Cuts for the last couple of months, last couple of years, um, and he continues to do a great job. Uh Dom's Home Cuts, these Home Cuts, is the number one place around Northeast Ohio for a great haircut at a low price. For only $7, you won't find a cheaper haircut because you can count $7 on your hand. Uh, you can get a modern haircut and styling. $7, all that $7 is going to Dom, so you don't have to tip unless you really want to. Uh, but you are going to want to because he does such a great job. Uh, every time you go into the shop, you're going to get a professional cut. They get better every single time because Dom is always upgrading his equipment uh, and his tactics so he can give you the best haircut possible. Uh, me, Truman, and about 90% of the guests have gotten their haircut at D's at least once in their life, and they have never been disappointed. Uh, so go ahead, check them out on Instagram, D's Home Cuts. Uh, set up an appointment directly in the bio. Send them a DM if you have questions. But check them out, D's Home Cuts, professional haircuts at a low price. So let's talk about football. Uh, we have a couple storylines here. We'll start with the Pro Bowl. Uh, so the Pro Bowl. Wasn't exciting. AFC won 26-7. Uh, Jamal Adams won the defensive MVP, and Patrick Mahomes won the MVP. Um, during the ceremony, uh, Jason Witten actually broke the trophy, uh, which just puts you know kind of a bow on his first season in broadcasting. It wasn't great, but he's, he's getting better. Um, but Jamal Adams and Mahomes won the MVP. Uh, it was a mess. I hated it. 30 minutes I watched it just it was tackle football it was touch football uh, you saw guys just getting the whistle blown on them before they even reached the ground uh, they just gotta move they just gotta get rid of it I think you gotta do two things here you gotta get rid of it which they won't do because it drew about 8.7 million viewers which is more than the NHL it doesn't even come close to the NBA all-star game um, but it's just boring. I hate watching the Pro Bowl. I think most people just watch it because there's nothing else on. Um, but they need to either get rid of it or just move it back to Hawaii and move it out to the week after the Super Bowl. Um, I get it. It fills the weekend between um, uh, the Super Bowl and the championships. But I would put the Senior Bowl on Sunday if I were them. Um and make that kind of like the filler game in between those, because that's a lot better game than the Pro Bowl. Um, also, you get guys who play in the Super Bowl to come out and play in the Pro Bowl, and then it's just so much better in Hawaii. Um, it's so much more fun to watch than in Hawaii than in Orlando, um, and I think guys are more uh, likely to go ho to Hawaii and play in a game than go to Orlando to play in the game, because I think Hawaii is more of a vacation-y spot. Um, and if you don't do all that, I think at the end of the day, you got to get rid of it uh, as a kind of a resume builder for Hall of Fame candidates. Guys like Trubisky and Prescott should not have been in that game. And they've they shown that. They didn't have great games. Uh, they, I think they both threw interceptions. Um, another thing I hated was when you had defensive and offensive guys playing different positions. Uh, I know Jalen Ramsey caught a touchdown pass. Mike Evans caught, uh, had a pick, I believe. It was stupid. I hated it. Uh, it's just a big joke of a game, and you know the guys don't really care. Most of the guys aren't even wearing gloves, which they usually wear in games, because they just don't care. Um, and I wouldn't, I don't blame them. I wouldn't care either. It's stupid. I hate watching the Pro Bowl. Um, but that's just my two cents on it. Move it back to Hawaii and move it back to after the Super Bowl um, to make it a little bit better. Uh, get it out of Orlando. I hate it in Orlando. 
But uh, that's all I wanted to talk about with that. Let's talk some Super Bowl uh, stuff. Uh, we're not going to get into it that much now. We'll get a lot more into it on Thursday. But there are a couple things that are starting to come out now that the, that the uh, Super Bowl is starting to heat up. You know, it's media week. Uh, we had media night last night. Um, so let's get into some of these quotes and different things that have come out from different players from the Rams and the Patriots. So we'll start with the Saints public enemy number one, Nikel Roby Coleman. Uh, let's talk about this quote that he had. Uh, they asked him about the Patriots. Why do people not like the Patriots? And he said, little asshole stuff. That's what makes you not like New England. And then they asked him, you know, how do you beat New England? And he says, you got to put the dagger in them, pull it out, and let them leak slowly. That's a bold statement. That's just, that's, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying right there. You're kind of um, trying to wake the beast. The number one thing to beat New England is to not do these quotes that scare them. I love the quote. Look, it's scary. Um, it's intimidating. And if I were a Rams fan, I would love it. Put the dagger in them and let it, pull it out and let them leak slow. That's a great quote. It's going to be one of those things I think you could put on a t-shirt as a Rams fan if you win this game. But another thing it's going to do, it's going to be a printed out thing, big poster, put on the bulletin board and locker room for the New England Patriots. They love using this type of stuff. You look at when you know the media started to pick against them after before the uh, Chiefs game. Um, they start they, they embrace that type of stuff. That's what makes them great. They embrace that type of stuff. They use it as motivation. Um, it's one of those things that uh, Roby Coleman. It's kind of like when you're about to get punished by your dad, and you know your mom's telling you you're gonna call your dad, and uh, he's coming home, um, and you go, you know, Dad, he doesn't scare me. You know, that, that's no big deal. But then he's coming, and you know in the back of your mind that that fear is going to start to appear, um, and you're scared. You're not wanting to show it because you don't want to show fear, um, but he's scared. I think those type of, type of quotes, you know, it's supposed to um, exude confidence from these Rams players, but to me that, that shows that they're scared. They're putting these quotes in there. Uh, don't give the Patriots bulletin board material. It's stupid. Uh, we've seen it time and time again. Now what they're going to do is Patriots fans, when they win this game, they're going to go make T-shirts and all this stuff, and they're going to be wearing them at the parade. So don't do that type of stuff. It's stupid. It's just stupid. Um, next, Brady. Tom Brady said this is going to be the he, – they asked him, what's the percentage chance this is his last game uh, in the NFL? And he put up the big goose egg, said this will be – this is a 0% chance this will be my last game. Um, now I don't know what that means. I don't know – if he could just be joking around again, he's not going to say this is my last game. Um, I think he still wants to play, but when he wins the Super Bowl and you know the lights are on, everything's shining. That's just the way to go out. That's just how you go out on top. I think you'll get guys like Devin McCord. He said he's possibly going to retire. Rob Gronkowski and Brady. I think we'll get those three Patriot legends. Will all retire at the same time. So I don't think this quote means that much to anything, but. It's interesting because if he does play another couple seasons, I think his performance is going to go way down. Again, it's the Patriots. And I think losing Rob Gronkowski is going to hurt because I do believe Gronkowski, this will be his last game. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens for uh, Tom Brady. Once once he wins those Super Bowls and the bright lights shine on, uh, I think he'll retire. If they lose, I think he'll come back. But it's so hard to go to a Super Bowl again. Uh, I just think Tom Brady will go ahead and hang it up after he wins this game, if he wins this game. Uh, but we'll get into picks on Thursday. Now, that's it with that. Let's talk a little Super Bowl storylines. Again, like I said, this is Brady's last game. I think this is going to be the big uh, kind of storyline going into this. This is Brady's last game. But the one I'm more excited about is this kind of old versus new NFL. you got the old Belichick, you know, pissed off era, the wind sprints, hard conditioning, run these guys, you know, don't let them have fun, the hard-nosed football guy type of NFL versus the Sean McVay era, the players coach, the young, uh, the attractive, the offensive-minded, trick play coach, uh, lets his players, you know, jam out the lock music in the locker room, uh, it's just a flashy guy. You got these two forces now clashing in Atlanta, uh, and we're going to see which wins out. Um, as a fan of the new era, because of Matt LaFleur, 
Uh, I'm hoping the Rams win this game, and also because I hate the Patriots. But you're going to see these two forces clash. And to see who wins this um, is going to set a precedent, I believe, for the next couple years in the NFL. But we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but that is probably my favorite storyline. The old NFL versus the new NFL clashing on Sunday uh, in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. So that's it for Super Bowl. Uh, I want to touch really quick on the Saints game. Uh, everybody knows my position on this. I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, every fan base, every team has been screwed by a call. Uh, so stop complaining, um, Saints fans. You're not going to get the game replayed. Uh, I know people are freaking out because the four out of the six crew members in this game supposedly had direct ties to Los Angeles. They grew up in Los Angeles. But if you really go into it, it's stupid. Um, the crew that worked the game, Bill Winovich's crew, was 0-8 when they, uh, when they, when they uh, ref the Rams game. They're 0-8. The Rams were 0-8 uh, when Bill Winovich, Winovich's crew uh, ref their games. They were 0-2 this year. They went 13-3. The Rams went 13-3 this year. Two of their losses came from Bill Winovich and his crew. And... Uh, it was actually a funny thing because there was a peti petition online. There's a petition on that line now to get the Saints to replay the game, get the NFL to replay this game. But there was a petition online before this game created by Rams fans. It had about 10,000 signatures on it to not let this crew uh, ref the Rams-Saints games. And at the end of the day, this crew helped the Rams to win this game. Because, again, they were 0-8 versus the when they uh, ref the Rams game. The Rams haven't won a game uh, with Bill when Bill Winovich is uh, refing uh, their games. Uh, but that's interesting to see because, again, they also said, you know, four people, one guy played for the Rams. The guy who played for the Rams recused himself from refing this game. He didn't ref this game. I think people just don't understand it. Just stop complaining. Let it go. You lost. The game's over. You're not going to get it replayed. Uh, they're not going to switch everything up just let it go um it's gotten better over the last couple of days but still rams fans you just i mean saints fans you just gotta let it go the rams fans are going to enjoy the super bowl obviously the saints are the better uh fan base uh they deserve the super bowl as well but the rams have worked hard they won that game calls could have went each way just stop complaining let it go i get it it hurts um, as a victim of the fail Mary, I understand, but just let it go. It's not going to get any better if you keep, you know, harping on this type of thing. You keep looking into these bylaws and reading these rules on page 160 of the NFL rule book. Just let it go, move on, and your life will get better. All right. That's it for football. We got a quick question here. Who do I think will win the NBA MVP? Uh, we haven't had a question in a while, so this is kind of nice. This is a little bit refreshing. So let's get into this a little bit. NBA MVP, I think you got four candidates right now. Um, I think Harden leads the way. He's averaging 36 points, game, points per game. Um, he is on another level this season in terms of scoring. Uh, he still has that 30-point you know, streak with games. Uh, he is on another level. But again, another guy is Paul George. Paul George has 27 points per game and 8.1 rebounds per game. Those are both career highs for him. Uh, he's first in the league in steals. And I think he's going to win the defensive MVP award. But again, he should. he's second right now in terms of MVP. But also, Kawhi Leonard's up there as well. And Giannis. Both of those guys are putting together good seasons. But I think it's right now. It's Harden, 50 feet of crap, <clears throat> then it's Paul George, then it's Giannis, and then it's uh, Kawhi. Uh, I think Giannis is going to win an MVP later on in his career, but I think Harden is going to win it this year easily. But that's it for that. That's it for our show today, guys. We want to thank you for listening. Uh, we ask that you go on to iTunes, give us five stars, rate, review us, and subscribe. Uh, we want to thank you to our sponsors, D's Home Cuts and A's Lawn Service. Follow us on Twitter at TNT Sports Talk 12. Uh, that's where you can send us DMs if you have questions, comments, concerns, things you didn't like, things you liked, uh, stuff we should add. If you want to be a guest, send us a DM. If you want an interview on the show, if you have tips on how to get pro athletes onto the show, um, 
And every day before the show, we do post a little uh, blur about what's going to be on the show. So check out our Twitter at TNT Sports Talk 12. Um, that's TNT Sports Talk Aaron Rodgers, um, the number 12. Find us on Spotify also. Uh, if you can't find us on iTunes, you can also find us on YouTube. Search TNT Sports Talk there, and uh, you should be able to find us. Listen to us tomorrow on 12 Ounce from 7 to 8 a.m. Uh, check us out on your commute. But other than that, have a great day. Tune in on Thursday. Um, we will have, hopefully, another interview for you on Thursday. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Check it out on the Twitter, TNT Sports Talk 12. Uh, and we should have another guest on Tuesday. Uh, but we'll see what happens from there to now. Uh, but check us out. Listen in on Thursday. Uh, but have a great day. Uh, and uh, go Pack.